The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the December 7th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes. Yeah, that's who I am. And what I know is that, uh, I, boy, I'm sorry, I was multitasking there and I completely lost my train of thought out there. But here's what I do know, and that is that in life, everything is happening for us, not to us. That's right. So when you learn that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. I would love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send it off to Steve at TFNN.com. But inside the subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, within any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, at 11.08 in the morning, we've got a sea of green out there. In fact, the only uh, sector inside the S&P 500 trading the downside is the healthcare sector. That's off about 32 cents. All the U.S. indices we track are trading the upside. Dow's up 51, S&P 32, NASDAQ 185, Russell's up 9, semis are up 68, trading's up 60, gold's off 70 cents, lights recruit is down about, um, oh, I got the wrong screen up there. Thank you. I think I'm assuming that's what the ping was. Thank you for that, Al. Give me a second here. We'll get that uh, screen situation taken care of. There we go. So now you can at least see what's going on inside the uh, markets out there. Uh, that's the XAR chart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, thank you. No, not enough screens. Not enough screens out here. Okay, so anyways, all the U.S. indices are trading to the upside. Uh, if we take a look at who's leading the charge here, it is Domino's Pizza. 408.18, it's up $15, nearly 4%. You've got the um, advanced micros up nine bucks. That's uh, almost an 8% move there. Adobe up $8 and change. NVIDIA up eight. Inspire Medical up uh, seven to the downside, leading the charge. Humana off nine. 50, that's 2% move to the downside. Viva Systems off 7 bucks or 4%. Eli Lilly down 1%, 6 bucks there. Argon Inc. down 6 bucks or 13%. Alta Beauty down 5 That's about a 1% move to the downside. So let's begin by taking a look at uh, what's going on with the equity futures. We're going to change screens again here. First, I'm going to get to the right um, tab where I want to be at, and we'll take a look at the daily equity future contracts out here. So give me a moment. We're going to see the white background screens. Hopefully, it's the correct ones here. Uh, screen, there we go, upper right. We should be good. Now, three of the four daily equity future contracts have topping patterns. The ES Mini does not. That's the one that does not. Now, what the ES Mini is doing, it's trading with inside that very narrow range profile. That profile at the bottom where support is at, 45.51. Resistance where price is trading into right now is at 45.83 or at 45.86. A close above 45.83 would suggest that we go back and we retest the highs from a few days ago. That high was a trading session of December the 4th, and that high out there is at 46.07. Again, no topping pattern inside of the ES Mini. That is not the case with the NQ. That is not the case with the Dow, which yesterday confirmed a TD9 count top. Today completes that pattern, 
price should pull back and test that oscillator and change line. The oscillator and change line is currently printed at 35.977. If price tests and rejects that level, that would be the next entry point to a long position inside the Dow. If price closes below that, well, then it likely heads down to test the top of its daily profile. You will notice that's at 35.704. You should notice that the top of that profile or that profile itself formed below price. That is a bullish message. That doesn't mean price can't get back there. It just tells us that is a bullish message out there. The only way that gets unbullish really would be a close below 35,281. I didn't skip over the NQ. It's got that Rhodes Mintum indicator top. It's got that TD9 count top. It's got prices consolidating with inside its profile. Now, this is a bullish structure profile, slightly bullish in structure, but it still has resistance at that oscillator and change line. So if the market is in a sell position, so to speak, uh, that's where price should find real resistance, 16,039. If we take a look at the Russell 2000, yesterday it confirmed a sell the D-point pattern. How did it do that, steve -O? It did that when it generated that bearish shooting star candle price here should also pull back to its oscillator and change line you'll see that's green you'll see that the top of its newest daily profile that formed yesterday also formed below price just like the ym just like the dow that is a bullish message it does not mean that price won't get back there but in this case here we suggest that price should pull back to test the top of that profile and the oscillator and change line, do it all at the same time. And again, if price holds that level, that would be the next entry point, still knowing that 1892.70, its TD9 count breakdown level, is a key level of resistance. That's what it did yesterday, and then price sold off. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the daily equity future contracts. What we're going to do now is go skip over and take a look at the 30-minute time frame. The reason we're going to look at the 30-minute time frame is because two of the Four have topping patterns. Those two being the ES Mini upper left hand side and the NQ upper right hand side. You'll see a TD9 count top. So far, it's taken hold. That suggests that price is either top for the day or that price should pull back to test support. Support here, just like we looked at in the daily time frame, doesn't matter what time frame we look at, it's really the same. Uh, it is the exact same interpretation. So now what price should pull, do is pull back to test that oscillator and change line. 45.69 and change out there. Maybe it gets to 45.68. I don't know what the exact number is when price gets down there, but it's right in that range. If price tests and rejects that level, well, that would be the next entry point for a move today. If price closes below that level, then we're looking at in the ES Mini, that is anywhere between 45.52.50 up to 45.56. That's the range. That's a four or five point range out there that's got a lot of potential support. If we take a look at the NQ, it just will complete the TD9 count pattern another 17 minutes out there. But completing it just means that, you know, that high or low can come on the bar following bar number nine. This well, here, the high of the pattern is on that bar. Uh, that doesn't change anything other than the threshold level. In other words, if price closes above that high, let me give you what that high is. The high for the NQ out here is at the 16011 area. If price closes above that, then that suggests that we had higher. Now, there is additional resistance inside of the NQ, and that's up at the 1603775. So there's two numbers for you to put to work uh, there. What price should do here with the TD9 counts is pull back to its oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 15915. In the case of the Dow and the Russell 2000, no topping patterns out here. You just have price consolidating inside the Dow with inside its uh, profile. That's between 36067 and 36184. You do have resistance at 36238. Uh, Again, that's a 30-minute time frame that you and I are looking at. And with regard to the Russell 2000, support would be about 185490, or that would be level one. The 185170 would be the key area to watch. That is the center of its bearish structured profile for the 30 minute time frame that's where a counter trend move to the downside would or should find support steve rhodes with tfn we get back to this break we're gonna take a look at crude oil a seasonal pattern brent wants to look at that a firm for mcguppy erx for jimmy d wba for elo and xar for joey d i'd love to hear from you folks as well Get ready, Tigers. Thursday, December 14th, Tim Ord is back to host another stellar live webinar. From 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will delve into the secret science of market tops, helping you, the viewer, with how to effectively call market tops in order to increase your success in trading. Tim Ord has developed this understanding over decades of trading and is ready to impart this knowledge on you. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Tim Ord's secret science of market tops. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, what's on your screen right now is the seasonal uh, pattern for light sweep crude. I can go back 33 years, and so I've gone back 33 years. Now, this will be especially helpful for Sue and Bethesda. Sue calls in every now and then, uh, talks about Exxon Mobil, the energy sector, and so forth. So, Sue, this is really just a little bit of a follow up to our conversation yesterday. And we take a look at light sweep crude. You can see that it typically tops out. Here's the top. The first one comes right around September the 30th, and the second one, not don't know which one is higher or lower out there. That doesn't really matter. Right around October 13th. So that's the time frame that light sweep crude enters its unfavorable, truly unfavorable seasonal cycle. And we can see by taking a look at the bars at the bottom here, this shows you the monthly action. And you can see that October, November, and portions of December are the worst performing months out here. So uh, we also know that Mondays and Tuesdays aren't so good. Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Friday is the best for light speed crude. At least it has been over the last 33 years. So the very first thing, and Brent is asking, is um, where is the seasonal pattern, the annual seasonal pattern, where does it typically find a bottom? Turns out that first bottom comes in right around the end of this week, December 10th. I believe that is Sunday out there. So is that Friday? Is that Monday? I don't know the answer to that question. It then leads up and gets us to, to a rally, typically, uh, for about a week through the 16th. And then it pulls back for another week out there. And then that's when it really starts its favorable seasonal cycle. So, Brent, the favorable seasonal cycle historically over the last 33 years has begun right around December 21st, 22nd. When our eyes shift back to the left-hand side of the chart, we can pretty much see that price continues to move higher. Yes, it moves up and down, but it continues to basically move higher into that September 30th type time frame. So that's the seasonal cycle. We take a look at what's really gone on with regard to light speed crude. Turns out it was September 28th that made the most recent swing high in light speed crude. So what you and I can see here is there's no doubt at this stage of the game, light speed crude is following along the seasonal pattern. 
Now, in a daily time frame, the only real A to B equals CD pattern that I could draw in here. Now, I could start with that September, September 28th high and move all the way down to this B point, which is the low of November 8th. But I can't use as a B point right here the low from 10 October 6th and then use uh, the uh, C point as the high from October 20th. The reason is because that's an 86% retracement. And once you get above a 0.786 retracement, it's really not an A to B equals CD pattern. If anything, maybe it's a consolidation. Well, we can clearly see this is no consolidation out there. So the only real active A to B equals CD pattern, and this, you can see this one's just 35%. Uh, it's not even a 36 point, uh, uh, 36 point 0.8% to retrace, but that's close enough at least out there. We could put in an even larger one, I believe, and that would be using the swing point down here uh, from November 1st. Then as the that would be the B point, the C point would be up here on November, I'm sorry, on, uh, on November the 30th out there. Did I say November 1st is the B point? I meant uh, November the uh, 16th. It could be the other B point out there. But the point is that you've got this A to B equals CD to the downside. We've got, in essence, a seasonal pattern that's going to complete Friday or Monday of uh, next week out there, Friday of this week, Monday of next week. When we look at the weekly time frame charts out here, we can also see that price is trading into a cluster, a cluster of trend line support. So it's in a pretty decent support range out there. When we look at a monthly time frame chart, that's your lower left-hand panel. What we see out here is a good old-fashioned consolidation. Now, that consolidation is in play. The bottom of the consolidation, right around 64 bucks. We've got 66.20 for an A to B equals CD target. Uh, $64 would start to violate, would really violate those trend lines out there. Um, is price going to get down to the $64? I don't know. This is perhaps the most important chart out here. Not that they're not, not that the other three weren't important. But when we really take a look at what's going on inside the lights we crude at this stage of the game, and although it's been crushed, let's kind of put this in perspective. If we take a look at the quarterly chart, we go from that low that was below zero, right? It was down minus 40. What did it get down to uh, here on lights we crude? It's showing. Uh, well, because of the contract that I'm using, that's okay. Uh, uh, see, when we go from the low of uh, March of, uh, I'm sorry, of April of 2020 up to the high lights we crude of uh, January of 2022, we can see that we're just simply at a 0 0.382 retracement. And we're at a level, which happens to be the top of the quarterly profile that is held as a, a support. So the top of the profile, which uh, normally would be resistance, that is support. We can also see that price was above that profile for more than two consecutive quarters before it uh, formed out there um, uh, and, and while it's been forming. So any uh, so if you're asking me, where is the real key level of support for light sweet crude? Well, because that's a bearish structured quarterly profile, it would be the center line. So the real support level. For lights we crude is between 56.46 and 66.60. I'm not saying price is going to get down there. It could get down there, that's for sure. Now, what's missing on the daily uh, time frames out here, and we'll switch panels, is uh, any kind of a bottom signal just yet. So we've got the A to B equals CD pattern. So, no, that's a, pat that's a pattern that's in play. But when we take a look at this chart out here, and I'm going to open it up. This is the daily time frame. You should now be seeing the white background chart. I'm going to get rid of these A to B equals CD lines. Those aren't needed because... My other chart really picks that up. And uh, what we can see out here is that uh, there's no bottoming signal whatsoever. Now, we are in that wave number four. That's letter D. And those of you that are aficionados with the uh, Chapman wave know that once you get to letter D or the fourth wave out there, which the only way that gets confirmed is with a higher low. And that could take place today. Uh, typically, the market will do something else. So let's go with that theory that the market might do something else once you get to that fourth level. Not that it's made the bottom, but that it's made at least a temporary bottom. Well, what should then take place is price should then move up to that oscillator and change line. That would be the real key area of resistance, or at least the first level of resistance, currently printed at 72.55. Now, if we use that theory, after you get to wave number four, you start to see some change. Well, we'd use the same principles here on the intraday charts. We ought to see some bottoming patterns. So do we see any bottoming patterns on a 10-minute chart? The answer is no. On a 15-minute chart, we are in bar number eight. That says that we could see some type of bottom by 12 noon out there on that time frame. The 30-minute chart, you're below profile. The oscillator and change on that says I want to go tag 69.28. Uh, do we have a bottom on the 60-minute uh, chart? The answer is we do. The price is pulling back to support. Now, that support level is the bottom of its profile, and the bottom of its profile is at 69.39 out there. So those are the levels to be watching. Do we have any of those intraday bottoms inside of Lights Recruit? We don't at this stage of the game, but stay tuned. We may get those. So, Brent, 
I hope that helps you out, Sue. I hope that helps you out as well. And um, hope that helps everybody also. Let's go to our next request. Now, this came in yesterday, and I know that I responded, but I think it was all after the show. So let's go ahead to it. If I did it during the show, my apology for being um, so forgetful. I suppose. But that is the first take look at Affirm Technology. AFRM is the uh, ticker symbol. And AFRM, what do we see out here when we take a look at this chart? What did this do yesterday? You're exactly right. What this did was really generated two different patterns. The first pattern was a TD9 count top. It completed that pattern yesterday. There's a new profile, by the way, that's formed, and that's today. So there's that new piece of information, McGuppy, that you and I didn't have yesterday. And that is that you now have a new bearish structured profile that is formed. The top of that profile is 39.28. The center, which is basically where we're trading right now, is at 30, um, 37.97. So 37.97. And the bottom is at 31.44. I said 37.97 twice. Now I've said it three times. But Guppy, if price closes below 37.27, we're certainly going to see price get back to 35.67. That's his daily oscillator and change line. And below that, we would see 31.44. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We come back to this break. We'll finish looking at a firm. Go to ERX, WBA, XAR, AGEN, and we're going to take a look at the yen for Peter and the Tigers. It's December, Tigers. That means festivities, decorating, spending time with friends and family, and the TFNN Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale. Don't miss your chance to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Once you apply your Tiger Dollars to your account, you will be able to use them for any TFNN product purchase instead of your credit card. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to purchase your Tiger Dollars. Don't miss your chance to receive up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase this holiday season. Every Tiger who purchases Tiger Dollars will also receive a complimentary TFNN Tiger mug with their purchase. Act fast, this sale ends December 17th. Happy Holiday Tigers! TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We're taking the charts here for a firm AFRM. 
holdings out there. Weekly chart looks uh, wonderful. The only exception to that, McGuppy, would be if by tomorrow's end, end of the session out there, it were to generate a bearish reversal candle. And there's a possibility it could generate a uh, bearish shooting star, just like the uh, daily time frame did yesterday out there. So just keep an eye on that for tomorrow. If that were to occur, that would tell us that we could be looking at a, a deeper pullback than the ones that we just took a look at. But let's cross that bridge when we get to it. Right now, conditions remain bullish. And that's the same thing for the monthly time frame chart. So I'd expect that price would pull back, test that oscillator and change line. That could be the next entry into it. But the concern there is that if price closes below the center of that bearish structure daily profile, boy, oftentimes, a high percentage of times, uh, price will get down to test the uh, support level, and that would be at 31.44. So one step at a time out there on a 30-minute time frame, I don't see any kind of a bottom signal as we speak uh, just yet, although you actually – you could get in this next 30 minutes. So we've got 31 minutes. We've got uh, 29 minutes left. Let me just update this. So this is, no, I take that back. There's no bottom signal at all out here. So what I'd be watching for is, uh, for from a rally standpoint, your real resistance level on a 30-minute time frame is 39.16. So McGuppy, I know I gave you some of that information yesterday, but uh, you got that new profile today, and that's going to be most helpful to you in managing that TD9 count top. But longer term, a firm still looks pretty darn good. Let's go take a look at the request from Jimmy D inside the Tiger's Den. That's to take a look at the ERX. Well, you know, Jimmy, the ERX, which is the energy sector, we know that it's directionally correlated to lights we crude. So um, and we just did, a, I thought, a pretty decent analysis of crude and what to be looking for and its seasonal patterns so this is likely to head lower uh, should head lower through tomorrow maybe monday then if the seasonal pattern light speed crude holds we should see a rally for about a week and then we should see at least one more thump to the downside now when we look at the charts out here we don't see any kind of bottoming patterns uh why well, take that back the one potential bottoming signal out here is a wave number seven uh, that I've got, but that requires a higher low. You could actually get that today. So that's a possibility. But really, with regard to the ERX, you've got to get light speed crude moving in the same direction. So the weekly chart, prices testing breakout level of support. A close below 53.82 would suggest we get down to test the swing point low, uh, which could be from uh, June, and that would be maybe in the 48.39 level. Another swing point low would be down at 47.96. So that would basically be the range that we'd be looking for. The monthly chart's not really going to help you or I very much out there. So that's what I see, Jimmy, when we take a look at ERX. Again, keep your eyes glued to that light speed crude uh, set of charts out there. The next request came in from ELO. Uh, and you bet. And uh, ELO wants to take a look at uh, Walgreens Boots. WBA is the ticker symbol out there. So let's pull that up. And what do we know about it? Beautiful looking weekly chart. Last week it confirmed a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. It did that when it generated that bullish hammer candle. It had confirmed another Rhodes momentum indicator bottom that never got violated, and that was back on the week of November 3rd. What we can say about Walgreens Boots is it is absolutely trying to form a bottom. Now, in the case of its weekly chart, what you'd be looking for here, ELO, is a close above 2235. Why? Because that's the center of its bullish structured weekly profile. And a price closes above that, just like we discussed in some of the earlier things that we were looking at, price should be able to make its run up to the next level of resistance. That's the top of its weekly profile. And so Stevie would say 2411 if we get a close above 2235 come tomorrow. The monthly chart looks muy bueno as well. Why? Because it has a TD Nike out bottom. And this month you could generate a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom as well. Now, the key level of resistance here is 23.92. If price can close above 23.92, uh, well, really what we'd say is, you know, 23.92 so close to 24.11. Let's just make it that 24.11 number. And if price can close above 24.11, certainly on a weekly basis and on a monthly basis, then that would bode well. And that would suggest that over time, Walgreens Boots wants to make its move up to the 34 level. But one step at a time, this is going to be day number two of consecutive moves higher out here for Walgreens. If we take a look at its day dance steps, it's typically found a two-day consecutive rally to be something that's difficult to overcome. So you might want to keep that in mind out there, ELO. If you're looking to add to a position, Steve, we would say, well, today is not the day to do it. It might be when you get a two-bar low. And we really haven't had one that's led to a bullish move at this stage of the game. But uh, do realize that, uh, you know, this has struggled after two consecutive days of rallying. So that would just put a high probability tomorrow 
will be something different out there. Now, I don't have a signal on a 30-minute time frame to tell you that that's what's going to unfold. You can see here, this is still very bullish. We've got an A to B equal CD pattern. A bearish reversal candle for a 30-minute bar would confirm a sell the D point pattern. So I hope that that helps you out. Uh, lastly, with regard to Walgreens boots, I, I did see data in my seasonal pattern out there. And the seasonal pattern shows that Walgreens boots typically moves higher. This is over the last 24 years into about the uh, December 12th. So that's what, next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, something like that. And that makes a, a move lower into the uh, for a week into December 19th out there. So ELO, thanks so much for the request. Hope that helps you out. Let's go take a look at XAR for Joey D. Or is it, uh, yeah, Joe D, not Joey D, unless I typed it in wrong. And so let's go take an XAR. What is XAR? Excellent question. It's what we're going to go take a look at. And XAR is trading at about 128 bucks or so. That is the uh, Aerospace and Defense ETF out here. Now, there's a new profile that formed a couple days ago. So the very first thing, Joe, is that your resistance level is at 136.9. Uh, your support area, and it's a bullish structured uh, support zone, is between 125.85, 126.39. Do we have any kind of a topping pattern? The answer is we do not. The price, if it does close below 129.27, that's its oscillator and change line. That's also, that's just its oscillator and change line. If it closes below that, odds favor, price makes a move down to the 126.39-ish area out there. On a weekly basis, you could get a TD9 count top that confirms between this week and the next two. This will be bar number eight this week. The monthly chart looks very good out there. The monthly chart is suggesting that it wants to make a move towards its high. I don't know if that's the all-time high. I'm not pulling it back that far, but that's the high from June of 2021. Now, price right now is tested that level on a monthly basis. When I say test that level, the low of that swing point is 129.61. It's already tested that. It's rejected that, but it's so early in the month, we can't really say what that means. But what we can say is we know that the weekly chart is getting ready to set up potentially a TD9 count top. We really won't know that till next week, but it's got all the makings of that. And the daily time frame, you've got what looks like just a consolidation with inside this profile. So, Joe, I hope that that helps you out with regard to the aerospace defense ETF out there. And thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Dan wants to take a look at AGEN. Let's see, do we have that up on our screen out here? I think the answer is we do not. Why didn't I do it? Good question. Not on purpose, but I just didn't have it put in here. But we're going to get those screens populated. It's going to take just a few moments because of some of the things that I've got open on my system out there. But this is a genus, A-G-E-N-U-S. Agenus? Agenus? Let's just go out agent out there. And what do we know about Agen? Well, Agen, actually, I'm going to switch over to my other charts here so you can click quickly see that and hopefully I'll remember to move back. But we're going to a break here. I think I'll remember to move back. What's on the other charts out here, let's just open this up, you can see the descending trend lines. So if you're wondering where's resistance stand inside of uh, AGN, well, that's the top of its profile and that's at uh, 83 cents and that's at its descending trend line. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, let me just update you a new development uh, when we take a look at the 30-minute uh, uh, equity future contracts out there. Again, the ES and the NQ both have uh, TD9 count tops uh, that are in place here. There's a new profile that formed inside the ES Mini, and that's why I wanted to bring it to your attention. And that new profile's got resistance at 4588. That's not really the important thing. The important thing is that it's a bullish structured profile, and where price pulled back to was the bullish structured buy zone and that's between 4565 and 4572 so price has made its way back to the nine count patterns any kind of topping pattern and this is why it's so important to understand support or resistance all that a topping pattern really says is i want to get back to test support it's when it breaks through support levels that tells you something else uh that's going on in the marketplace right now inside the yes mini that hasn't happened now the yes mini needs a close above I can tell you what that level is. It needs to close above the bar following bar number nine and negate the signal. And that would be 4587.25. But there's also resistance at 4593. That's its TD9 count breakdown level. So that's a real key level to watch should price exceed this TD9 count top. One reason that could take place is because the NQ is right now trying to take out its TD9 count top. It needs to take it out before it um, uh, gives us any kind of signal. Well, this is also forming a new profile, uh, just formed uh, just as we uh, came on at, uh, at from this break here. This has resistance. Now, let's see what kind of profile this is. This has got resistance at, got to move this over. Resistance at 16011. The center's at 15977. So that's a bearish structured 30 minute profile. We had a bullish structured 30 minute profile on the ES, bearish structured 30 minute profile on the NQ. That tells us that price really shouldn't be able to take out that TD9 count top, but it closed above the top of that profile, and that again is at the 16011 area. Well, that's what it will do, and if it takes that out, that tells us about a strong upward momentum move. To take us to where? Well, it's where it has that last top, that Roach Mentum Indicator top again from 10 o'clock in the morning on the uh, 6th. That was yesterday, and that's up at the 16037.75 level. That's the real key area that the NQ would need to close above to uh, suggest that we've got something else that's going 
going on today. But right now, you've just got resistance being tested. Pay attention to those profile levels out there. And now let's move back to take a look at AGEN from Dan inside the Tiger's Den. So, Dan, we saw that trend line resistance. We saw the top of its daily profile. Now let's go check on the chart and see if there's anything else out here for you and I to glean. The first thing that we can gleam out here is you've got a wave seven bottom and a rose momentum indicator bottom for its daily time frame. We can see that price is trading with inside that profile. We looked at again. This shows resistance 84, support at 75. If we take a look at that weekly time frame chart, last week it confirmed a rose momentum indicator bottom. Two weeks before that was a TD nine count bottom. Price is traded with inside its profiles. The resistance level here is at 94 cents. So a close above 84 should get you up to 94. If you can close above 94, which is the top of that weekly profile, price should be able to make its way up towards 111. 111 is the monthly oscillator and change line. Uh, Agen has rallied for two consecutive days. I'm sorry, it pulled back for two consecutive trading sessions out there. And uh, so coming off of the bottom here, we saw a move higher for two days and a pullback for a couple of days out here. We've got another one. So this says that we probably should rally. AGEN should rally for the next couple of days out there. What you're looking for is more sustained moves, something above four consecutive uh, trading sessions to tell you off this bottom that you likely have a change in trend for it. But right now, we'll use the patterns that are in play here. We'll use the profile levels because you and I know where the buyers and sellers are lined up. And that sort of gives you and I an uncom a competitive advantage out there. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Now it's Peter's turn. And Peter wants to take a look at the yen. So let's get those charts up on our screen out here. Really wants to take a look at currencies. But the yen is the one that's having the biggest move. If you're asking yourself, Steve-O, why is the dollar getting so weak today? That's because of the move inside of the Japanese yen. So out here, what you'll see is you will see an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. Obviously, we've exceeded the one to one. Today is going to become bar number eight of the TD9 count. That says, Peter, that you could get a TD9 count bottom between today and Monday. Now, typically, markets don't end on wide-ranging bars, and most certainly that's what we have today. Um, so odds favor that the TD9 count uh, bottom doesn't take place uh, today on bar number eight, but perhaps it does so tomorrow or on Monday of next week out there. That's what's going on. We take a look at the Japanese yen on the daily time frame. On the monthly time frame, Peter, this is telling you and I that price wants to go target that 141.51 level. That, on a weekly basis, is its breakout area. If we take a look at the euro, the euro formed a wave number seven top out here. What did the euro do after that? It pulled all the way back to test support, and that was the weekly support of its oscillator and change line. If that level fails, and by failing me to close below 1.078, that would be bad news, or it would be the news would suggest a further retracement out there. And on the euro, the daily time frame isn't suggesting anything otherwise, although it is moving a bit higher today, but we've got no bottoming pattern on the daily. We do have a potential bottoming pattern on the weekly, so we want to keep track of the daily. Now, the first signal that that weekly bottom might be kicking in, I would say it would have to be a close above yesterday's high. That would at least be the first potential signal. Because we traded below yesterday's low, it wouldn't be the most gigantic confirming signal, but it would be a decent one. In the case of the Great British Pound, if we take a look at it, it's trading below its oscillator and change line. It's lost its momentum for its daily time frame out there. But that's all that I've got. Its level of support or next level of support will be 1.247. That's its weekly oscillator and change line. Now, we're not going to stop there for Peter because I think Peter has even more questions. The reason he was asking about the yen was because he and others are trying to figure out what impact does this have on the markets. So to do that, we're going to change screens out here. We're going to go to the black background screens. And while I'm doing that, this is not what we're going to look at. I'm actually going to go ahead and shut down the uh, currency charts just so I can free up some space out there. But what we're going to do here, Peter, is try to answer that question. And I'm just assuming here, so I may make a you-know-what out of me out there by that assumption. But I'm assuming you were asking about that so you could try to understand how is that impacting the markets. Let's say gold specifically. 
Well, here's the chart that helps us answer that question. The top portion of this chart is the gold, the continuous contract for gold. The center portion is that U.S. dollar Japanese yen. And the bottom portion measures the correlation, the directional correlation between those two instruments. Bars that are below zero tell us about an inverse relationship. In other words, a move lower in the yen should result in a move higher inside of uh, the uh, of gold. Now, this is using a, let me just make sure, I think this is a five-day average. Could be three, but let me just take a quick peek here. And the answer is Stevie is using a five-day average here. Now, if I switch that to a three-day average, I got to close it. You'll see that it still has a pretty decent, pretty decent inverse relationship out here, Peter. But uh, you'd say that starting from June of uh, 2023 out here, you know, it's a little bit better than a coin toss. And you and I, we don't really like those coin tosses out here. All right. So that's what it takes. That's what we're looking at. We take a look at gold. Well, what about I thought I saw somebody inside the Tiger's Den. Uh, something ran across my, my my screen. I thought that was thinking, well, what impact does this have an impact on equity markets out there as an example? Well, let's go find out. Let's uh, let's put in here. Let's put in the S&P 500. Right. So let's put in the SPX out here before we go to break. Let's see if this thing can populate and give us the answer. If not, we'll do that when we get back from this break out there. And the answer is, come on, we got about maybe five, six, seven, eight, nine seconds. Looks like we're gonna have to wait. Nope. So there's your three minute. Your three minute says it's really a coin toss to say that the move lower in the Japanese yen is gonna impact US equities, or at least the S&P. At Ready Tigers, Thursday, December 14th, Tim Ord is back to host another stellar live webinar. From 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will delve into the secret science of market tops, helping you, the viewer, with how to effectively call market tops in order to increase your success in trading. Tim Ord has developed this understanding over decades of trading and is ready to impart this knowledge on you. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Tim Ord's secret science of market tops. TFNN, educating investors. Ho, ho, ho! Oh. It's December, Tigers. That means festivities, decorating, spending time with friends and family, and the TFNN Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale. Don't miss your chance to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Once you apply your Tiger Dollars to your account, you will be able to use them for any TFNN product purchase instead of your credit card. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to purchase your Tiger Dollars. Don't miss your chance to receive up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase this holiday season. Every Tiger who purchases Tiger Dollars will also receive a complimentary TFNN Tiger mug with their purchase. Act fast, this sale ends December 17th. Happy Holiday Tigers! TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Welcome back, up, folks. So uh, let's uh, finish out the uh, show. I think we've been through all of the requests out there. Hope I have not missed anything inside the Tiger's Den. If I have, please type it in uh, right away, and we'll try to get that done. But we're taking a look at the NQ out here. Uh, the NQ, which has led markets uh, lower, so to speak. Really, we're just in this little consolidation out here. Got the ES Mini, by the way. It is trading above the top of its daily profile. That's at that 45.82 level, or at 45.87. Uh, the NQ looks like it wants to go target the top of its daily profile. The top of its profile is at 16,102. We can see here on the 30-minute chart, that's one that we were monitoring, and there's another five minutes, four and a half minutes left in the trading session. Right now, it's showing us that uh, the TD9 count would get negated. Again, you've got up here at that 16, uh, 037, 038 level. That's an area of resistance. If we take a look at the 60-minute time frame chart, it's going to complete a TD9 count top at uh, 12 noon out there. So that suggests that price could pull back. Now that could be a biggie, because if price does pull back, its objective would be 15,889 out there. Of course, you're gonna wanna follow along with the 30 minute time frame chart and its profile levels and so on and so forth out there. But that's the next topping signal that Stevie sees when I take a look at intraday charts out there. Also at the 16.037 level is a TD9 count breakdown resistance area. That's coming from the 120 minute time frame chart. So those of you that are looking to go short, it's really between about the, uh, I'd say that 16.037, 16.037 could be nicer, really right at about 12 noon, give or take. I'd, I'd go with that 16.037 level. Now price closes above that. Well, that's what's going to take us up to the top of that daily profile, 16102. Folks, thanks so much for joining me. Have a terrific Thursday. Be safe out there. I'll look forward to speaking with you again soon, and that soon will be tomorrow, 11 a.m. sharp. Take care, folks.